Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma Talk is given by Daniel Hung Shui Sharpenberg. So I'm going to talk about this story. And this is a koan that is present in both the Blue Cliff Record and the Book of Serenity collections. And... I'm going to read a traditional version of this story, and then I'm going to tell you my version, and then I'm going to comment on both, and that's how we're going to bring it together. I spend some time thinking about, like, how can I take these ancient old stories and sort of make them feel relevant to people? And this is one I really like, and I've talked about it before in other situations. I've talked about it before because I really like it. This is the the story. It's called The Flower Sermon or the story of the Buddha and the flower. And this is a traditional version I'm going to read now. Once when the world honored one in ancient times was upon Vulture Peak, he held up a flower before the assembly of monks. At this, all were silent. The venerable Kashyapa alone broke into a smile. And the world honored one says, said, I have the all-pervading eye of the true Dharma, the secret heart of incomparable Nirvana, the true aspect of formless form. It does not rely on letters and is transmuted outside the sutras. I now hand it to Mahakasyapa. So, first time I heard that story, I I really was curious about what's happening. And so I'm going to sort of tell it again another way. And we're going to see if we can get to the bottom of it. So the Buddha, the historical figure, he just had people show up and follow him around because he had this reputation for being wise. And sometimes sometimes there were huge crowds of people just following him around, hoping he would say something really wise that would change their lives. And in this case, he was at this place that we call Vulture Peak. And many of the people around had heard him give talks before and were greatly inspired. So he stood up like he was about to give a talk and people got really excited. They were really ready for this talk. And he stands up there and he's just really quiet and he doesn't say anything. And so everybody's just kind of looking around and they're waiting and they're wondering what's going to happen. And he pulls out a pretty flower and he twirls in his hand and still doesn't say anything. And so this great assemblage of people, they're all like, what, what is going on here? Right. And except for the one guy, Kasyapa, and sometimes he's called Maha Kasyapa, which Maha means great. He sees the flower twirling. And he smiles. And so the the Buddha says, he gets it. He understands, essentially, he understands, he is here with me, he understands. And everybody else is just, does not know what's happening and they're confused. They're just standing around and they're, they're thinking like, I was expecting a great teaching and we're getting nothing. This is, this is crap, right? I was expecting this wise, great teaching. I was expecting my life to change. And that's exactly the problem. That's exactly the problem. They were all carrying around expectations. They expect a wonderful teaching or they're carrying around baggage. They're remembering other teachings they've had in the past. And maybe they think, oh, I wonder if the Buddha is going to teach impermanence again. Oh, I wonder if he's going to teach the foundations of mindfulness again. I wonder what he's about to teach. And all he does is show them a flower. So they have all these expectations. They have, they're living in sort of this uncertain future where they are expecting something different than what they get, or they're living in the past and they're thinking about teachings they've gotten before. And they're thinking, oh, I hope he explores this some more in his teaching, right? They're thinking all these things and they're comparing this talk to other talks and they're carrying around baggage from other talks, and they're just wishing for something that's really going to change their lives. They're hoping to get a teaching that's so great that they'll instantly become enlightened. 
because some of the old stories say that sometimes the Buddha could give a teaching and somebody around could become enlightened. So they're really hoping for that. And he just shows them a pretty flower and doesn't say anything and that's it. So what is different about Kasyapa is this. The Buddha holds out a pretty flower and this one guy, Kasyapa, he's just there with the Buddha and a pretty flower. So he's not thinking about what he wishes this was. He's not thinking about teachings he's had before. He's not wishing for something different. He's not reflecting on the past. He's not projecting his desires. He's just here. So to him, it's just a pretty flower, man. So he sees a flower and he smiles and everybody else is just carrying all this stuff. So they don't just see a pretty flower. Rather, they see what they wish was happening instead or what they've seen before. They don't see what's right in front of them. And this one guy, because he's able to put down all his baggage and his preconceptions and his delusion, he's just here. So he's just doing nothing but being wakeful like a mirror, just reflecting the beauty that's in front of him. And that's it. And this, this story, which again, it's a koan in several koan collections. Students are supposed to really reflect on it deeply. Uh, this story is told as the foundation of the Zen tradition. The foundation of the Zen or the Chan tradition, the real beginning of it all, because the Buddha saw that Kasyapa got it. He saw that Kasyapa understood and he made we say he transmitted the Dharma to Kasyapa. He made Kasyapa the first Zen ancestor, the first lineage holder, because Kasyapa, of, of all these people, was the only one who could just be fully present. And so all of that being said, this isn't just a history lesson or a philosophical story, but rather, I like to think about how we can relate this to our own lives, because... We may not be, you know, in front of this grand spiritual teacher, the Buddha, but we are all the time bringing our baggage into our experience. We are all the time seeing a pretty flower, and we're not just seeing a pretty flower because we are distracted, we're moving on autopilot, we're carrying baggage, we are just somewhere else a lot of the time. And because of that, there's a lot of happiness that we could find in life that we fail to find because we're thinking about what we wish was happening instead. There are many opportunities for pretty flowers, even when things seem really awful, as they do a lot of times, there are still things to look around and appreciate instead of clinging so hard to what's not happening, to what we wish was happening. 